Hello, thank you for tuning in to this 2020 primary election candidate forum for Thurston County Commissioner position number one. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County along with Thurston Community Media. This forum is being held electronically due to COVID-19. Cat candidates, moderators, and timers are joining in on Zoom links with the help of Thurston Community Media. A bit about our league. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the legislature and other governmental bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to all people ages 16 and up. I'm Alison Brooks from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. A timer will show a sign when you have 30 seconds left, and then again when our candidates need to stop. If the candidate is on the phone, I will let you know when your time is up. The candidates for this position are Bud Blake, Thomas Bollander, Bollander C. Davis, David Gaw. Unfortunately, John Hutch Hutchings was not able to join us today. Carolina Mihija and Rory Summerson. For this forum, candidates will have one minute to respond to a question about qualifications, followed by a series of questions in alternating order and concluding with one minute closing statements. So let us begin. The first question is going to be, why are you the most qualified candidate for this position? And so we'll go in order. Bud Blake, Bud? You have one minute to tell us why you would be the most qualified candidate for this position. Yes, and thank you, everybody. And my name is Bud Blake, and I'm running for Thurston County Commissioner District 1. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for having this forum. It's exceptionally important to be able to have a discussion and understand who the candidates are who will be the next person to take this position. I, I am the best candidate, qualified candidate for this position. I've had 29 years of leadership and experience in the fields of uh, economy, social issues, security and safety, in terms of uh, being able to bring a solution to the table. I absolutely love to listen to people, and I uh, take that into uh, account in terms of making legislative policy, be able to make a solution that fits for everybody in Thurston County. I have two master's degrees, and I've been a resident here for over 24 years. I look forward to serving you as your next county commissioner. Thank you. Thomas Bolander, you have one minute to tell us why you would be the most qualified candidate. I also thank you for inviting me to this forum. I appreciate it. Um, I believe I'm the most qualified candidate for this position for multiple reasons. Um, one is, is I'm not only a lifetime member at Thurston County, but my family's been here for over 125 years. So we've got a lot of history going back. And um, so I know a lot of people. Um, I have all sorts of different background history from real estate, my younger years, to running my own retail businesses, working for retailers, and now the last 12 years I've been working for state government in the nursing commission. Um, I believe that my approach to fiscal responsibility and my ability to choose people who can help me when I can't have don't have the answer because I don't always have the answer makes me a great candidate. Thank you. C. Davis, you have one minute. Are you there, sir? Hello? Hello? Hello, C. Davis, you have one minute to let us know why you would be the most qualified candidate. My name is C. Davis, and I am the most qualified for several reasons. To start with, I have been in Olympia 27 years, but I am not part of the insider network. I am not part of the swamp. Uh, my career includes 27 year, 23 years of information technology where I specialize in uh, dealing with very large, complex systems that uh, it was my responsibility to make run efficiently and reliably. We need in county government because it's not being run either efficiently or reliably. Uh, I have worked in uh, retail. I've owned two stores. I am a landlord. 
So I, I know what's involved in housing. I understand the housing issue. I understand the crime issue downtown. Uh, and also, it is not my goal to be well liked. It's my goal to do a good job and serve the county. And we will have a lot of very difficult decisions to make in the next uh, years. And thank you. It will be my responsibility to fix the problem. Thank you, David Gaw. Thank you. David Gaw, you are next. You now have one minute. I'd like to thank uh, the League of Women Voters for Thurston County for this opportunity to express my vision uh, as Thurston County Commissioner in District 1 or Position 1. Uh, so I really appreciate this opportunity. Relative to my uh, competencies and experience, um, I have both a bachelor's degree from the Evergreen State College, a master's degree from uh, Western Governors University in management and leadership. Um, that align with a lot of my experiences with over two decades um, of service to our community federally, um, at a federal level, at a state level, and locally um, with the uh, county, uh, Kellett's County as energy efficiency manager. I've got extensive budget experience that I'd like to bring forth, and my focus is bringing the community together in a collaborative way that brings in the element of innovation so that we can address our climate crisis um, that's in front of us, um, as well as address the affordability, the homelessness, and our operational efficiency needs. Thank you. Carolina Mejia, we ha you have one minute to give us a description of why you would be the most qualified candidate. Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Carolina Mejia, and I would like to thank um, the League of Women Voters and Thurston County Media for hosting this forum. I think it's very important that um, you know, we get to know who is running for our local offices. I believe I'm the most qualified candidate uh, because I have the experience in terms of policy and finance. I am a mother, uh, both my daughters were born here in Thurston County, and uh, I'm also a county employee. So I know the county at a personal level. Uh, I have a bachelor's in business administration, um, and also I went to law school for a year and a half. Thank you. I plan to bring uh, unity, accountability, and transparency to the county. Thank you. And finally, Rory Summerson, you have one minute to tell us why you would be the most qualified candidate. Hello, and thank you. My name is Rory Summerson. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having us all here. Um, I, really, I think the biggest reason why I think I'm the, the most qualified candidate is because I have experience working directly with community members. So I have lived here in Thurston County for 13 years. Um, in that time, I have graduated with a degree in automotive technology, um, which makes me a diagnostician. Um, and I work in people's homes, uh, doing providing services and in home care. Um, and so I have a long term experience in the community, actually working with people in their homes and diagnosing their concerns and providing solutions for them. Um, I also sit on the board of two nonprofits in the community, one specializing in um, HIV education and awareness, um, and the other specializing with some of the most disparately impacted members of our community, providing outreach advocacy and services for those members of our community. So I have a lot of experience with our unhoused population and some of the needs that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think that I have a lot of experience to bring to the table in those areas, so thank you. Thank you, Rory, and thank you, everyone. And Carolina, I may have mispronounced your last name, and I apologize for that. I believe it's Mejia. Did I get it right this time? It's close? <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, going forward, I want to thank all of you for letting us know why you'd be the most qualified candidate. For the following questions, the first respondent will have two minutes, and subsequent candidates will have one minute each to respond. So the first question will go to the first set of candidates, Bud Blake, Thomas Bolander, C. Davis, and David Gaw. And then the next question will go to the remaining candidates. I'm going to rotate the questions to the candidates so the first responses are rotated as well. So our first question, we're going to start with Bud Blake, and he will have two minutes for the response. And then I will call on the other candidates for a one-minute response. And the first question is, what is the county's responsibility to address the homelessness crisis? Bud, you have two minutes to begin. 
Yes, as a former county commissioner and former chair of the uh, Behavioral Health Organization, Thurston Mesa Behavioral Health Organization, and director of a uh, health director in uh, Lewis County, uh, for Thurston County and the homelessness is by far, uh, we need to take a priority approach to it. I would start with uh, behavioral health and mental health issues. In the past, I've been able to, as a team of, 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 of those with me on the team in behavioral health, we put two treatment centers in over the last four years, one in Shelton, one in Thurston County. We already had one. I think that's critical to have that infrastructure so that you'd be able to have people in law enforcement bring those who are in need to those treatment centers. Next, uh, I, in the future, I would take on the drugs. Drugs are a critical issue in terms of reducing some of the homeless, in terms of uh, uh, treatment, uh, substance abuse that has not been able to be a uh, priority even from the state level or the county level. And I know that to be one of the issues in terms of getting people out of their uh, addiction. Next would be uh, homelessness. Affordable housing is an issue. I've worked on affordable housing for four years. And while that might be an issue, it's slow and, and it's tedious and it's long process. You can include things from impact fees to land development, land use. It all gets in the way at, from a city level and a county level. Although it does have some resolution, it's really not the high priority this time. So uh, behavioral health in terms of treatment centers to be able to go to, substance abuse, a relieving of addiction, and then finally some affordable housing. Thank you. Thomas, you have one minute to respond to the question. And if any of you ever need me to repeat the question, I am happy to do so. Thomas? I'd like you to do that, please. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> so, Thomas, what is the county's responsibility to address the homelessness crisis? Oh, um, well, definitely uh, there is a huge homeless crisis in Thurston County. Um, nobody, nobody likes to see it. Um, and homeless issues are both related to affordable housing, um, but the mental health and the drug addictions, um, those people are the ones who I feel like are just being kind of left out in the cold. Um, you know, I drive down the streets and I see people doing drugs while I'm driving down Capitol Lake. Um, and so I think that we need to put more emphasis on trying to help treat those people, get them jobs, get them to be more productive members of the community where they'll be happy and make it a safer place for us. Thank you. C. <laughs> Davis, you have one minute to respond to the question. Homelessness. Homelessness is not so much a responsibility of the county. The county has a vested interest in dealing with this issue because homelessness is a, is a major contributor to crime in the community and is also a major contributor to environmental degradation because these homeless camps ultimately dump litter and sewage into sensitive wetlands. What we have to recognize is the homelessness, homeless population is 80% drug abusers. Now, we will not solve this problem if we don't realize that we have to deal with the drug problem. The drug problem can be dealt with uh, with a three-prong approach, and that's going to be law enforcement. As long as, you, as long as you do not address the problem aggressively, it will continue. So we need to take these people off the street, and then we need, and step two, we need to get them into jobs programs. It can be labor camps, however we want to do it, but it's going to have to be a job program. And the third step will be Thank education because most of these people with drug problems didn't even graduate high school. Thank so you. We want to remove it. Thank you. Thank you. And next for one minute, we have David Gaw. All right. Thank you. Well, relative to uh, the county's um, responsibility, we actually have a, uh, crisis plan in place that was adopted by the Board of Commissioners already. Um, that is underway, but we do have challenges relative to our ability to implement the specific actions necessary to, uh, at least that were addressed from uh, that specific plan. I believe that there is an opportunity to uh, get down to um, applying a lot of the elements within that plan, uh, specific to the causation of homelessness. There are mental and health issues uh, as well as um, the originating cause is that being able to afford to live in a home or rent a home, um, as well as the joblessness um, that's been occurring because of the COVID crisis. 
So there, there's a multi-prong approach in terms of addressing this. Uh, the county has also just hired a homelessness coordinator that can help facilitate and coordinate as well as collaborate with the community as they are doing. That is one of the action plans. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Okay, we're going to move on to our second question. And Carolina, you will have the second question first, or be our first respondent, and you'll have two minutes. So here's the second question. Please discuss your priorities in addressing the budget shortfall and other issues, such as increased unemployment, lack of medical insurance, business closures created by the pandemic. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for your question. Uh, so with COVID, um, this pandemic, we're going to be in a very tight fiscal situation by the end of this year uh, if we don't uh, get our ducks in a row. So what we need to plan is, first off, we need to see who, actually who in our community is going to be affected. We need to do a study uh, to see what resources we can implement out to the community. I think it's important. I don't think we should start investing in uh, resources if we don't know what, uh, who is affected, what the causes are, um, and how we can process from there. Um, also, we need to start preparing for that second wave of COVID and how that's going to affect us uh, financially um, and just getting everything uh, in policies in order. Social services are usually the first to go when it comes to budget cuts. We need to make sure that does that it doesn't happen in this situation because people will be relying on social services that the county offers now more than ever. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, work with other local jurisdictions uh, and also local nonprofit organizations that already have boots in the ground uh, to try to uh, work together and have a unified response after this. Thank you. Rory, you now have one minute to respond to the question. And if you need me to repeat it, I'm happy to do so. No, that's perfectly all right. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we we are in uncharted territory. We are going to be in uncharted territory continuously for the next year, potentially two years. They're projecting that it could be up to 10 years for our economies nationally to recover from this, um, you know, impending financial disaster that is brought on by COVID. And so I don't think anybody's really in a position to, to be predictive in terms of what we're going to need to do with the budget. But I think suffice to say what we need to be doing is prioritizing worker protections, making sure that we are not in, inadvertently or, you know, uh, at, you know, implicitly targeting workers, we should be targeting programs um, and seeing where we can cut back and streamline. Um, and then additionally, you know, we do need to do a lot of partnerships and uh, collaborations uh, to figure out where we can stream uh, funding revenue, uh, funding sources and where we can divert projects into a nonprofit arena rather than being funded exclusively by the county. Thank you. So now we'll move to our third question and Thomas you will actually get to start with a two-minute response and here is the third question Lacey Olympia Tumwater and the county have committed to reducing reducing Thurston County's community-wide greenhouse gas emissions by 45 percent below 2015 levels in 2030 and 85 percent in 2050 as county commissioner, what would you do to ensure we reach those targets? Thomas, you have two minutes to begin. That's a hard question. <laughs> um, so I drive an electric car because I'm trying to lower greenhouse gases. Um, and I believe that maybe the county investing in more uh, electric charging stations around the county for people to be able to who don't have long range EV vehicles such as myself mine has anywhere from 30 to 40 mile range and so sometimes it's harder to make a bunch of plans so I think that um, definitely adding more availability for electric cars is a huge huge thing for us to do um, I also think that it's important to work with some of the manufacturers, find out what kind of emissions that they're putting in the air and um, move forward from there. Thank you. C. Davis, you have one minute to respond to the question. So one of the, one of the obvious answers as far as reducing CO2 emissions 
is to understand that the cleanest form of energy that we have in this state is hydroelectricity. Yet we are seeing that there is a, a move away from using hydroelectricity. So if we really want to address the environmental issue regarding CO2, we need to change our perspective on that. Uh, the other comment I'd like to make on that is as far as greenhouse gases, the, some of the most significant greenhouse gases are, are sulfur dioxide, which we don't really even talk about. And primarily that comes from uh, paper pulp mills, which I believe the last one closed uh, last year. So if we can focus on alternative energy and using the free market to develop alternative energy, and Thurston County can be a repository for alternative energy uh, development, then we will accomplish a great deal without having to take draconian methods uh, in you. order to. Thank uh, you. We appreciate that response. Thank you. Uh, David, you now have one minute to respond to that question. Thank you. Um, I, I'm a board member with the Thurston Climate Action Team and an active and engaged participant uh, with the Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan relative to what the county needs to do as well as its collaborators uh, within the jurisdictions is that they have dedicated themselves and committed to um, fighting this. And relative to my work, uh, what we see with the data is that uh, on the building side, we have a challenge. That challenge is uh, our connection to natural gas. So we need to find alternatives relative to my experience. Um, I've worked at the federal level with Bonneville Power Administration, uh, as an energy efficiency manager at Calitz PUD, um, to both address that issue through emerging technologies. This is something that is, has been established in the region. So we actually have a solution to address the climate challenges that are in front of us and am actively doing so to support that. Thank you. Thank you. Bud, you have one minute to respond to the question. Yes, and thank you. And as kind of been stated, we need to incentivize uh, where those uh, aspects of uh, alternative sources are, are working. And then we have some where uh, industrial and development is not in terms of uh, causing contamination. And we need to, I wouldn't say do the most restrictive, but at least do some approach to be able to correct it. And lastly, I'd like to see Thurston County have a, a research and development. I think this is critical in using the best minds that we have here in Thurston County do a lot more research and development to be able to lead in the future. And I proposed that before when I was a county commissioner. Thank you. So we're going to go to our fourth question. And the fourth question, uh, Rory, you'll get to respond for two minutes, followed by Carolina responding for one minute. What steps would you take to ensure that people of color are treated fairly by law enforcement and within the county criminal justice system? How would you track and measure the progress? Rory, you have two minutes to answer the question. Yeah, no, this is a really great question. Um, so I think a lot of members of the community here recently have seen that I've been down at the protests um, and actively participating in allyship, active listening, um, and in solidarity. And what I'm hearing from the community is that we need dramatic overhauls um, of our entire policing system. Um, and so I think one of the, the core things that I've heard from the community as far as the step that they want to have taken is really this idea that we need comprehensive review of all of our policing. That's, you know, for all of our active police officers and county county sheriff included um, so a full full review of every arrest every iteration of um, communication um, and, and any complaints that we've we've seen um, happen against the, the the county sheriff's department or policing in general um, in our community so I think that's one of the things that the community wants to see happening right now um, another thing would be you know um, really advocating for diversionary steps um, making sure that instead of um, sending an armed police officer out to every inter interaction we're encouraging sending uh, critical service responders out like mental health professionals um, you know housing coordinators um, you know drug abuse coordinators um, instead of police officers so that we can reduce the amount of interactions that we're actually seeing in the community other steps that i've heard suggested would be you know not sending an officer with a gun 
um, to, to an interaction, potentially have a partner there that has a gun still in the vehicle and have somebody with no gun approach. But there are a lot of um, discussions that need to be had about what the most feasible methods are uh, to address the interaction side. Um, but we do, we have a lot of systemic inequity in our entire policing system, and it's not limited to policing interactions. It has to do with the courts, um, um, you know, and, and how we're actually processing um, complaints. And so there's a lot involved, um, and I think a lot of it needs to be discussions that are led by people of color, black and brown people who have un who have lived those experiences. So we do need also advisory committees that are specialized on that, like a human rights commission at the county level. Thank you. Carolina, you have one minute to answer the question. Could you repeat the question, please? Absolutely. What steps would you take to ensure that people of color are treated fairly by law enforcement and within the county criminal justice system? How would you track and measure progress? Well, um, thank you for that question. As a person of color, I relate very closely to all these issues. Um, you know, I feel like we need to make sure the county adopts strategies um, and develop policies uh, to make an inclusionary government. I think it's very important. I've worked for the court system for over four years now. And so I know what our court system is doing to approach those steps. Our criminal justice system is not just the cops. It's not just the courts. There's other players in there. There's the clerk's office. There's the prosecutor's office. There's the public defense. And all those parties need to come together and work together. Uh, I believe uh, in regards to uh, having police brutality and those issues, I need to, um, I believe we need a community overseeing board uh, with subpoena power. I think it's important for uh, the community to be involved in these processes, uh, especially when there are complaints of police brutality in our community. Uh, giving that access to the community, I feel like it creates a trust between community members and government that is very much needed at this time. Thank you. And we'll go to the last question. And C. Davis, you're gonna to get to start the response and you'll have two minutes. Last question. How important do you think it is to work closely with cities in Thurston County and why, and if yes, what will you do to achieve those relationships? Well, the first thing I wanna say, it's very important to work with cities in Thurston County because uh, the county ultimately is responsible for the protection of those people who live within the county, including those people who live in cities in the county. And while some cities do better than others, we have an example, take for example, Olympia, which grossly fails to protect its residents. We have, we have a crime rate in Olympia, which is just amazing. If you, if you look at that, if you look at FBI data, violent crime in Olympia is rivaling, uh, with taking murder out of the question, is rivaling Detroit. And so on a county level, we are responsible for addressing cities that are failing to deal with crime. Uh, that's, a, that's a fundamental responsibility. And, and I, I would like to say that I, 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 would, I, I thank the uh, Thurston County Sheriff's Department and the police officers of all three of the major cities because they are doing an amazing job and, and they need our support, not irrational criticism, uh, because we, in fact, we have a situation where we have very uh, reasonable policing. I've lived in big cities that have serious problems. And I think people who live in Olympia don't understand what pre police brutality really is. Thank you. Thank you. David, you have one minute to respond to the question. Would you like to, could you please repeat oh, it? Oh, absolutely. How important do you think it is to work closely with the cities in Thurston County? Why, and if yes, what will you do to achieve these relationships? Thank you. Um, this is uh, of paramount importance. Um, part of this reasoning is that we have federal and state policy that come into our fold as counties, as well as cities. And we need to make sure we have alignment to all of these uh, specific mandates uh, relative to all of the programs and services that we provide. This collaboration is extremely important in that it brings us in an element of uh, leveraging our costs, leveraging our resources. Cities have particular expertise at the local level. The county has their expertise and bridging those two pieces together allows us to actually bring in that element of diversity and 
perspective, uh, perspective so that we can actually form solutions that address the primary issues that I'm fighting for as county commissioner. I've done this at a county level. I've done this at a federal level. I've done this at the local level when I worked in Kellett's County as well. This is something that I can bring to the fold and make it happen so that we are all successful in implementing the right policies for our community. Thank you. Bud, you have one minute to answer the question. Yeah, I would say it's not only uh, critical, but it's absolutely required in order to be uh, move forward the way the future of Thurston County is gonna be. We're all one uh, Thurston family, and there are issues that are gonna uh, arise where we agree on and disagree on, but it's gonna take that relationship to be able to resolve those issues in or move forward in terms of uh, a success. That could be anything from uh, legislative, uh, boundary movement, or UGA, or something like that. And also don't forget that the Thurston Board, uh, Board of County Commissioners act as the Board of Health. There are health issues that are bordered all throughout Thurston County that need attention. And I think that uh, it's absolutely required to be able to do that on a daily, hourly basis. Thank you. Thomas, you have one minute to answer the question. Um, well, you, you know, there's lots of cities and uh, Thurston County. So, you know, Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, Yelm, Tenino, uh, all, all uh, like, like I heard a minute ago, we're, we're all in the county. And so if you're not communicating with the board members and, um, and where are you going to get, there's a lot of things that I think need to be addressed that are going to be, um, you have to deal with cities. I like the thought of going in and dealing with both Olympia and Tumwater. Um, one of the things that I would really like to see happen when I'm in office is to do something about one of the most iconic properties in Thurston County, and that's the Tumwater Brewery. Um, well, it's not a brewery anymore, but I believe that, you know, working on issues like what are we going to do with this thing and either get rid of it or or figure out a way to make it it's something for the whole community to enjoy. Thank you. And thank you all for answering the questions. We are now going to move into the closing statements. Each candidate will now have the opportunity to provide a one minute closing statement and I will call on you. I'm gonna start with Rory. Rory, you have one minute. Yeah, I, I wanted to say thank you so much for having me. Uh, my Again, my name is Rory Summerson. I'm running for Thurston County Commissioner District 1. I, um, I really encourage voters to get out and vote this cycle. We have a lot of things um, on our primary ballots and on our general that are massively important. I'm an LD22 delegate, so I see that our platform is amazing for the Democratic ticket. Um, so if you're a Democrat, get out and vote, support Democrats. Um, and I hope you'll support me when it comes to voting for Thurston County Commissioner District 1. Thank you. Carolina, you have one minute for a closing statement. Yes. Thank you so much again for this forum. Uh, my name is Carolina Mejia. Uh, I plan, my platform is based on affordable housing, the budget, and a more inclusive government and protecting our environment. I've had the support of several community leaders and have been endorsed by several organizations. So I, I count on your support. I hope to count on your support. Uh, like, uh, please go out there and vote. It's more important than ever uh, for your voice to be heard, especially during this time. Uh, if you would like to know more about me, my website is carolinaforthurston.com. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. David, one minute. Great. Uh, David Gaw here. Um, I thank the League of Women Voters of Thurston County for this opportunity. Uh, I believe I have the most credentialed as well as uh, experience that can bring the county forward in a way that provides balance to everyone in our community. I have the experience in managing budgets at difficult times, identifying innovations that allow for programs to continue, especially on the affordable housing side, the homelessness issue, and many of the other responsibilities as county commissioner. I also bring in the element of uh, uh, two decades of experience in the environmental side working with energy efficiency of renewable energy, as well as climate change. That experience alone will get us to, to a path that allows for the county to succeed in addressing those issues around affordable housing, around homelessness, and around our ability to operate the county in an efficient and an effective way for all of our taxpayers. Thank you. 
C. Davis, you have one minute for a closing statement. My name is C. Davis, and I, I want everybody to come away from this knowing where I stand on the issue. I support no new courthouse. We can't take care of the courthouse we have in the last 40 years. We would be just as irresponsible with a new one. No new courthouse. I will restore law and order to the county. No more rampant crime. I will balance the county budget, and I will balance it by a combination of budgetary cuts and expanding growth. If we expand growth in the county, and we are 25,000 houses short of what we need in the county, expanding growth will create jobs and will allow us to generate revenue without raising taxes. There'd be more people paying less taxes. I will clean up homeless camps, and the way I will do that is I will use the Marysville model. We will take drug abusers and we will put them into the system. They can either leave or they can be part of the system where they will get treatment and they will be put into labor, thank which you. is a great way. For, thank you. Thank you. Thomas, you have one minute for a closing statement. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I hope to get your votes as well. Um, I think that right now there's two really big things that are the hot topics, and that's COVID-19 crisis and police brutality. Um, I can tell you that uh, the week before last, I went down, I took my 12, 10 and 13 year old daughters to, to they, I asked them if they wanted to go and protest and they said yes. And so we went and we stood on the side of the road and we, we protested. Um, and then they came home and they made signs to support black lives. And I think that actually we do a really good job in Thurston County of that. So I don't feel like Thurston County wide, that's, I understand people's feelings, but our police in Thurston County, I think do a great job. Um, the other thing with the COVID crisis, I'm in, a, I'm in a position where you know, well, many of you probably are too, Thank where you, we had to get rid of everybody um, out of a building and we learned Thank how to you. Thank you. Thank take care you. of COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Bud, you get the final one minute. Yes, uh, thank you to League Women Voters and you, Allison, for moderating. Uh, of 29 years of leadership experience, I know I would make a, uh, a great county commissioner by, uh, first off, listening to people. I found that that has been the best in, in terms of developing legislative policies. We've gone through COVID and uh, security and safety issues as far as the Black Lives Matter, et cetera. But I think we've missed one particular opportunity to speak here today is that businesses, especially small businesses, have been slammed hard. And that's where I think the, the best place to put my, my um, your vote is with me to be able to watch out for the small businesses. That's going to generate the revenue we need to be able to fund the budget and be able to move forward in terms of the future of the generation of Thurston County. Thank you so much. And thank you. And thank you all for participating in this forum. And thank you to Thurston Community Media for coordinating this forum using Zoom. The forum will be available on Thurston Community Media channels on the League website and as a YouTube video shortly after these forums are concluded. We're glad you've taken this opportunity to view the forum. We remind you to please vote in the primary election beginning July 17th and closing on August 4th, 2020. Thank you for joining us today. Please consider joining the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and thank you.